Hello everyone! We are at the very beginning of the series, Epic Man said that he wanted to teach you how to save the world because someday you were going to need to replace him. Well, we can't do much from jail, so ha! He lost. Here's exactly how he would have saved the world before I took over. <laughs> Wait, are you not supposed to warm up your DVD player in the toaster? Duh. Before getting started on how, first we would need to answer what. I mean, what even was saving the world? At first, this might seem impossible to answer, because you all have your own personal sense of values, and a lot of the time, those values contradict each other. So was there a way around this? Well, yes. I guess if you really wanted to, you all could have gone to your shared core values and saved the world despite your differences. So let's just humor Epic Man's failed vision, just to laugh at him even more. Okay, so close your eyes, or still look at the video if you want, but just open your imagination. Forget the expectations anyone else has ever put on you. Forget what your social teams want from you. Forget politics. Forget the whole system. Forget what anyone has ever told you to believe, and just think about what you personally need in your own life. So what do you imagine as your best life? Do you have a home or are you homeless? Are you in good health or are you in bad health? Do you feel smart or do you feel stupid? Is everyone out there your friend or is everyone out there your enemy? Are you forgiven for your mistakes or are you hated for them? Are you really being heard by others or are you feeling ignored? Do you feel like a genuinely meaningful participant in the world or do you feel like you're only doing what you have to do because you don't have the freedom to pursue the kind of life if you really want. Okay, so open your eyes again if you close them. See, there are specific answers to what makes a good life that you can all probably agree on. There are completely objective differences between a good life and a bad life. So what if everyone could have objectively good lives and everyone could live without any avoidable suffering or emptiness or any of the other really awful stuff? Well, it wasn't only possible, but it was completely realistic to achieve if you all had just worked together to make it happen. Getting exactly those needs we just talked about permanently covered for everyone in the world is exactly what would have saved the world. But because Epic Man's not here to challenge me anymore, you could never make it happen ever. So, ha! You've all lost. Now let's talk about why. I mean, why should you have wanted to make life good for everyone? Why not just focus on yourselves and your friends and family? Well, just think about it. If you'd ended all of these problems for absolutely everyone forever, then you would have turned life itself into a situation where it becomes actually impossible for anyone, and that includes you, by the way, to get stuck in awful life circumstances no matter what else happens. If you'd all gotten together to finally just end homelessness once and for all, and end hunger once and for all, and etc. through every single problem you saw on your islands earlier, then you would have guaranteed more than any other possible way that your own life could never really get that bad. I'm so glad you never figured out that it's completely realistic for everyone to live well, and that you didn't have to ignore all those people who lived in avoidable, awful circumstances because of it, guaranteeing a better future for all of humanity. That would have been such an unbelievable level of superheroism that you would have ended my my entire career, and we definitely don't want that. If you need more reasons, let's talk about it. If the guarantee that your own life could never get that bad isn't enough, then why should you care about the circumstances of people you don't know, and even more so the kinds of people you actively hate? Well, you can get that wrong message in a lot of places. But personally, I think Epic Man got that message right from Jesus. Right from the Bible. I mean, have you looked at all that nonsense? Jesus wasn't going around thinking he was better than other people. He always babbled on and on about about helping the poor, helping the hungry, helping everyone who was suffering in any way. He didn't want us to judge each other because he thought that it was only God's job to judge us. <laughs> what an idiot! So if we want to defy his teachings, as I highly recommend, then we need to judge each other really badly. If you are already doing that, then great job! Oh yeah! 
I mean, the Bible literally says God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world in John 3, 17. And do not judge or you too will be judged in Matthew 7, 1. And since the closest way to God is to follow Jesus' example, and Jesus' example is to actively work toward making everyone's lives better without judging anyone or excluding anyone along the way, well then actually taking action to end all the world's avoidable suffering would have been the way to follow his example down to the letter and gotten you the closest to God. I'm so glad you didn't do that. You could have ugh, fulfilled all of Jesus' dreams. And the best part? I don't think you goody two-shoes Christians like Epic Man would have been alone in this plan to end all the world's problems. I think you would have had help from kind-hearted atheists and truly caring people from all their kinds of religions. I'm so glad you could never get past your differences to do that. Yeah, baby, evil prevails. Let's get specific. Specific about Epic Man's failed plan. Well, there are three ways to approach life and society. Count them three. You can keep things as they are, fight against things as they are, or use things as they are in the right way to change them for the better. You could have ruled out keeping things as they are, because clearly a huge amount of the world wasn't happy. So if you wanted all those same problems to never go away ever, even when you totally had the power to change that, you should have definitely done nothing about it and left all those people in eternal suffering. Fighting against things as they are would have also failed because while you would have made the effort for change, it wouldn't have been in a way that would have gotten you enough support. Because probably like 90% of people wouldn't have been comfortable with outright attacking the systems in place, and the 10% of people who would be wouldn't have been effective enough without more help. So you definitely should have done that too. You should have done things that were guaranteed to fail because then I win. It's a simple concept. Now using things as they are in the right way to change them for the better, that would have been a realistic way to approach it. I'm so glad you didn't do it. It would have actually worked toward ending suffering without scaring away so many people in the process. If you had a reasonable enough plan within the system to end all forms of suffering and save the world that was accessible enough for literally anyone to get on board with, then it could have been done. And oh, that would have been terrible for me. Let's take a close Look. Step one, getting the resources. You would have needed people with a lot of money to provide all those resources that you would have needed. But if you'd focused on one problem at a time in one community at a time, then you would have gotten that overwhelming task down to a reasonable first step. All of you together reaching out to compassionate celebrities would have been a great idea. With their level of connections and their money, many of them could have easily brought tons of power to your ideas in several communities all by themselves. And not just Hollywood celebrities either, but YouTube celebrities, social media celebrities, maybe even rich people who aren't celebrities. Anyone who is able and willing to be a total hero and put significant money toward paying for the work that would create the structures that would permanently improve the standard of living in as many communities as possible. You could have tweeted this video at them. You could have like shared it to their Instagrams or something. I don't know how that works works anyway. Whatever would have made them aware of the direct strategy. Step two, getting the local leadership. Once you got someone or some people with the resources ready to help you, you then would have needed to find direct leadership for this. Not one person for the entire world, because that would have spread it way too thin, ya ding dongs. But leaders on the community level, in as many communities as possible. One town at a time, one city neighborhood at a time. It could have been anyone the area respected enough and was passionate enough to carry this idea out. Out, but you would have needed to find a leader for each area. And once an area solved every problem for itself, then they could have branched out to help other areas catch up. And over time, if you all grew enough in numbers and power as a movement, your efforts could have ended up reaching everywhere. Step three, beginning the actual work of meeting every need of every struggling person. You would have needed to permanently end each worst living condition from most worst to least worst and worked your way up through all of them. So you would have needed to start with homelessness, the 
worst one. You would have needed building architects and carpenters and electricians and plumbers. Ideally, you'd have the rich person paying the workers because they deserve it. But even if you didn't have that pay incentive, well, just think back to all that island stuff. Remember the concept of everyone always having what they need and then creating a situation where homelessness becomes literally impossible, meaning that you would have been guaranteeing yourself and your loved ones to never go homeless either? Well, forget all that. <laughs> yeah, you should just give up here. The way to completely and permanently end homelessness as a problem would have been to make enough living spaces for every single person person in the area and to make them all free. Not an entire house for each person because that would have been an unnecessary drain on time and space and resources, but just a secure personal room set aside of a decently comfortable size. How many rooms would you have needed? Well, just get the statistics of how many people your area has and you could have effectively planned for that many. And remember, keeping it to small steps would have prevented you from overwhelming yourselves. You would have still taken care of a lot of homeless people even with just one house built. Then then you would have needed to figure out what the rooms needed. Let's think about it here. The homeless population's main concerns are safety, a place to sleep, and a bathroom to use. So that would have been your very first priority. And if you're thinking that there's some people who don't deserve a free living space, or that giving out free rooms would encourage laziness, then great job! Because only a goody two-shoes would have really believed in those teachings of Jesus about no judgment anyway. You and I can now defy him and all he stood for together. Yes, join me, and your journey toward the dark side will be complete. Anyway, you would have needed soundproof walls between the rooms to give everyone the quiet time they needed to sleep well, which is crucial to mental health, by the way, and you would have needed to install personal bathrooms. Because community bathrooms shared by so many people would have been a recurring problem to keep clean and maintained, so individual bathrooms would have been the one and done way to avoid the problem and not need to hire a cleaning staff. The the installed bathrooms wouldn't have needed anything fancy either. Just a toilet and a sink and a shower. Then the homeless wouldn't have needed to depend on store bathrooms anymore. Oh, the horror. Everyone could have reasonably been expected to be responsible for the cleanliness of their own living space. But you still could and should have consistently provided free cleaning supplies to encourage maintaining the cleanliness of the personal spaces and given them out evenly to avoid hoarding. There also would have needed to be strong security. A lock and a key for all the rooms would have probably been a good idea. I'd personally recommend security guards who hopefully would have been paid, and security checks for everyone entering to keep undesirable items out of the homes. Specifically weapons and drugs. Because there are homeless children out there, so if you guarantee that the environment stayed completely safe for children, oh, that just would have been too good. You could have even kept out alcohol and cigarettes for the same reason. Because the best part? No one would have even cared about you owning a gun at your own home or drinking somewhere off of the premises because it would have been completely irrelevant to the situation. The rules would have only been in place at these places specifically to keep the kids safe in these provided homes. So great job deciding to not do that. You could have installed security cameras everywhere too except in the bathrooms obviously for the same reason. You could have had them there to make sure no one got robbed or attacked because to truly follow the example of Jesus, you would have needed these homes to be open to everyone without any discrimination whatsoever, even if they didn't have an ID. But at the same time, you still would have needed to be ready to call the police if anyone was a threat to the other residents, and having security footage on hand would have been the best way to both discourage criminal behavior and avoid any he said she said while reporting crimes to the police. You wouldn't have needed anyone constantly watching the security cameras, just a feed to go back to if anyone brought up a safety or a security concern. From there, you could have actually ended homelessness entirely. You would have needed to just keep building these homes and rooms rooms until there's a free room available for every single person living in your area. Like Tinder, except, uh, for homes. And now, if you or your family ever hit really tough times and would have gone homeless or into serious debt trying to avoid homelessness, now you wouldn't anymore, effectively making that terrible situation not exist anymore. You wouldn't have been guaranteed an entire house to yourselves anymore, but you still would have been guaranteed your own rooms and bathrooms and safety no matter what. And if everyone around the world did this, then homelessness would have been completely solved on a global 
global scale, it would have made life better for untold numbers of people. Oh, the horror. Step four. After this, you could have focused on the next biggest problem, poor health. Because health starts with the diet, and so many people out there don't have access to a good diet. So if every community began providing enough healthy food for everyone who lives there, and made it free, then everyone would have been guaranteed the basics to great health. And while you're at it, you could have also taken this opportunity to run the network on vegan foods. Because if there were free vegan food available for everyone, and if that provided selection covered every dietary need of the human body, then you also wouldn't have needed so many animal slaughterhouses anymore. There still would have been plenty of people who would have wanted to eat meat, of course, but making a free vegan food source would have removed our dependence on those animal slaughterhouses for food. So please don't do that. We need the animals to suffer. For this, you would have needed to gather farmers and everyone in the food sustainability fields to get the system set up and running. And once again, it would have really helped to get funding for those workers and resources from rich people who care. But also, once again, you still could have volunteered to do it anyway, since ending the possibility of hunger for your entire area would have also guaranteed that you and your loved ones never would have gone hungry again no matter what. If everyone were guaranteed a free healthy diet, if you crunched those numbers to determine how many people were in your area and what amount of food was required to keep each person comfortably fed to figure out the total amount of food needed and then provided it, then you would have all gotten much more healthy automatically. But the other big aspect to this was medical care, especially for disabled people. So you would have also needed to get enough medical supplies and doctors at these homes, as well as therapists for mental health, and have them there for the residents to use for free. And as always, you hopefully would have had rich people willing to pay for the doctors and therapists you needed there, but like the other parts of the plan too, the lack of pay incentive wouldn't have necessarily needed to stop you from volunteering to do that kind of work anyway. And also like the other steps, you wouldn't need to try to overwhelm yourselves and do everything at once. You could have focused on getting the resources for more common medical problems to at least make sure you can help with those. Because once you made healthy food and medical resources become free staples of your community, that no one in the community including you or your loved ones would ever need to worry about going homeless or having avoidable health problems ever again. Step 5. Then you'd need to focus on the next biggest problem, poor education. You wouldn't need to focus on public education specifically, because not all kids have the money for private school. This one would have been best with an if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. If the area already had a great public school system, you wouldn't have needed to just go in and change it just for the sake of change. But at the same time, there were plenty of poor areas that could have used your help. You would have needed to bring back your architects and your carpenters and your electricians and your plumbers to build better public schools where they were needed. And then you would have needed enough teaching staff, again paid by nice rich people or done by volunteers, to run those schools effectively. You would have needed to have enough teachers to make the class sizes as small as you could possibly get them. I mean, Epic Man was a former teacher himself. He knew how ineffective it was to try to teach classes with 30 plus kids. So if you could have gotten the class sizes down to more manageable levels, like around 15 kids per class, it would have become just too effective to meet the needs of every individual student. More well-built schools and classrooms and more teachers and educational resources would have been your main priority to improving the area's quality of education. From there, you would have needed to make a standard optimal curriculum across all of your schools. You would have needed to find proven leaders in education around the world, collectively figured out from them the absolute most effective curriculum for kids everywhere, and then applied it at all of your schools. The curriculum would have needed to include teaching the skills that got you this far in the plan as a priority, so that the skills you would need to maintain a good quality of life going forward would stay strong in the future generations. You would have needed to teach them specifically how to build homes, harvest food, understand and know how to fix common medical problems, and then teach classes of kids themselves. Those kinds of courses could have been saved for teenagers once you got the usual basics down for kids and preteens, so that you wouldn't have overwhelmed them in their early development. If you were successful at that, and I'm so glad you weren't, every kid everywhere could have grown up into fully educated, self-sustaining adulthood with guaranteed safety and good health. And the last thing the world needs is smarter adults. That would have made defying my tyrannical rule much easier. And we don't want that. 
Step six, with that self-sustaining system put in place for your local area, you could have started connecting everyone. It's human nature to trust your own community while distrusting outsiders. So if you became connected enough with the rest of the world that you could think of everyone everywhere in the world as a part of your community, then there wouldn't have been foreign countries or kinds of people to be scared of anymore. So if you got past the stereotypes you were taught growing up and just thought of everyone everywhere out there as individuals with their own wants and needs, then you would have been able to truly focus on helping absolutely everyone in need without any judgment, just as your stupid idol Jesus wanted you to. I'm so glad you didn't follow his example, because that would have really gotten in the way of me taking over the world. The first thing you would have needed to do here was improve ground transportation enough to connect every community accessible by land travel. And because travel, all kinds of it, oh, it hurts the environment the most, you could have also taken this opportunity to really improve your impact on the environment. Because whether or not you believe global warming is a problem, it really wouldn't have been a bad thing to take this opportunity to be eco-friendly. And you could have done exactly that by massively improving your public transportation. Like houses, giving every single person their own car would have been a waste of money and resources, but making a flawless public transit system all across the globe and making that free too would have been a completely feasible way to give travel opportunities to everyone. For this part, you would have needed to gather up your vehicle mechanics and, oh, that's it this time, build enough trains and buses for every single person to use the system with room to spare. That way, there would have been no more overcrowding on the public transit, and you could have made it just as pleasant to travel by his car. And a greater number of vehicles could have also improved the public transit schedules, and made them arrive frequently enough to still be convenient when it came to easily getting places on time. And if you built all the new trains and buses on the most eco-friendly fuel sources possible for the environment, then these vehicles could have had no negative impact on the Earth itself either. Then you would have just needed to do the same thing, once again with environmentally friendly fuel sources for planes and boats. Make enough for everyone to use conveniently all of the time. You would have needed a bunch of train conductors and bus drivers and pilots and boat drivers to run the system with the increased number of vehicles. But you could have done it with funding from selfless rich people through volunteer work just like everything else. And if you really wanted to go the extra mile here, you could have eventually automated the vehicles on these public transit paths so you wouldn't have needed to depend on continuing to hire drivers for them. And once you got the system effective enough, everyone could have gone anywhere and learned about any part of the world that they wanted to. And then at this point, you could have easily brought resources to poorer parts of the world too to help them catch up on your optimized housing and food and medical and educational and travel networks and as a huge bonus you wouldn't have needed so many cars on the road anymore either which would have dramatically improved your impact on the environment step seven with a stable system of good living conditions around the world you now could have created rehabilitation centers across all of your connected communities the dramatically improved life conditions for so many people at this point would have probably already severely cut down on crime i mean no need to steal food to survive if you have a free source of it, right? But at the same time, there still would have been people like me. People who just want to cause problems for no reason. So you could have either kept your current system of locking people away forever with no hope of redemption, or you could have taken a different approach. I mean, imagine you or a loved one really screwed up and did something terrible. Would you rather you or they be seen as irredeemable and get locked away forever, or would you rather have the chance to truly redeem yourself? Don't forget those lovey-dovey teachings of Jesus. <laughs> Having compassion for everybody like that could ever happen. While it would have been a bad idea to just give someone a slap on the wrist for a serious wrong, you could have used your rehabilitation centers instead to focus on teaching people why what they did is wrong, why they should should care and then work through it with them until they truly understood it and then you could have given them the incentive to redeem themselves if you had enough of those places set up everywhere then you could have gotten to a point that you had a much more forgiving society you could have eventually replaced your prisons with that rehabilitation center and made genuine understanding and redemption the norm you wouldn't have even been gullible for it just more understanding and that's a scary thought when
when it comes to my dictatorship. Step 8. You would have needed to focus on improving your relationship with media. The internet and YouTube were a very worrisome start, and you were this close to overcoming the problematic influences of Hollywood culture. But thankfully, you never learned how to move your platforms in a more positive direction. To do that, you would have needed to seriously consider what kind of impact your content was having on your audiences, even when it was unintentional. Especially when your audience is full of impressionable kids. I'm so glad you never got past your tolerance paradox, that you kept thinking that hate speech was a necessary part of online discourse. Because it wasn't, and thanks to my evil machinations, you were never able to figure it out. So to improve this cultural messaging, you could have used your platforms and the media you created, to challenge all the unnecessary social pressures that caused your suffering. The idea that everyone needs to have romance to be happy, the idea was incorrect, and making romance an expectation to fit in caused so much widespread insecurity that never needed to be there in the first place. Ooh, it just makes me giddy to think about how much pointless things that caused for so many of you. And same with beauty standards, because beauty is purely an opinion, and pressuring other people to look certain ways when they don't or even can't was a lot more needlessly widespread insecurity, especially because you would have already saw unhealthiness based suffering at this point. You wouldn't have even needed that excuse that it encourages a more healthy lifestyle anymore. And celebrity status and worship? Let's think about this one. How does the pressure of being put on a pedestal feel? Or the inverse? Having everyone look down on you and maybe even harass you? Or in between? Feeling invisible and envious of those who are seen? Plot twist, idiots! Every part of the hierarchy feels terrible. The best possible social existence existence would have been as equals with everyone else. No more rabid crazy fans, no more haters, no more craving what you can't seem to get, just a peaceful and supportive coexistence that you idiots could never figure out. And if you resolved all of these problems, down to the last unnecessary social pressures that came from the messages in your own art, then you would have guaranteed that everyone has what they need to live a good life. There would have been no more unnecessary suffering. You would have <laughs> saved the world. Oh, it just makes me cringe to think about how good the world could have been if you did all that. I'm really glad you didn't. Step 9. You might be wondering, if you made all these things free, would people have wanted to work at all now? The scariest part is, yeah, they probably would have. This is when you would have needed to bring in your last group, tech experts. Automation has been on the rise to the extent that so many people are afraid of losing their jobs to it. So rather than making tech advancements something to be afraid of, you instead could have embraced it and simply made jobs no longer necessary for basic survival. Movies have made you very afraid of tech advancement, another problematic message I'm so glad you fell for, because if you were just smart about how you programmed your machines and didn't stupidly make them rebellious or self-aware, then there would have been no problems. Tech experts, if they continued on their current path, could have created the right kinds of machines to do all the necessary kinds of work that no one wants to do. And for jobs that can't be automated, like being a teacher, which is way harder than it looks, by the way. You simply could have raised your future generations on actually valuing those kinds of positions and on genuinely wanting to do the work out of the understanding that they're needed to keep the world going. You could have raised them on the value of it being a part of life. That's exactly why you would have needed to integrate the work needed for this plan directly into the education system, so that future generations would have never lost knowledge of those necessary skills. And even with all that, you still could have kept money as an incentive to do jobs anyway. There still would have been people who wanted to buy their own houses and their own cars and fancy meals away from the vegan food and toys. You just would have made money no longer necessary to stay alive and an acceptable quality of life. And finally, step 10. At this point, having broken free of your absolute dependence on corporations and government, you would have given yourselves the personal power to end every single remaining problem. You would have been able to shut down every unnecessary factory pollution the environment, and that would have put an end to the global warming threat entirely. Because again, whether or not you believe that global warming is a problem, being safe rather than sorry when there is no reason 
not to be would have been an amazing preemptive measure to making sure the Earth itself stayed not destroyed. That, combined with the improved public transit requiring less cars on the road, would have easily been enough to completely save the environment. And the other big way you would have ended all possibility of destroying the world would have been in no longer requiring powerful governments to run your nations. Because outside of needing small communities to run the free homes, the schools, and the rehabilitation centers, you would have now given yourselves the personal power to not need those big overarching governments anymore. You could have all come together to dismantle your remaining nuclear weapons around the world and your drones, and completely removed even the possibility of world-destroying wars for the future generations. Because beyond dealing with the occasional violent person like me, and believe me, there will always be people like me, you just wouldn't have really needed that kind of government power anymore. And again, the only concern would have been on country-destroying weapons. No one would have cared if you wanted to keep a gun at your own personal home for your own personal safety or for hunting. You just wouldn't have been allowed to bring them into the areas where they're vulnerable kids, like the free homes and the schools. Would that be world peace at this point? Oh, I'm just cringing at this total utopia. Thank my lucky stars you never did all this. And that you never solved global homelessness, world hunger, animal slaughterhouses, poor education systems, perpetually poor countries, significant crime levels, the prison industrial complex, the toxicity of social hierarchy, dependence on the job market for survival, all major negative impact on the environment, and everything in the way of world peace. Would there have even been any problems left? It's such a huge comfort knowing that without Epic Man, none of this can possibly ever happen. Because that would mean it's in your hands, and no one's gonna rise to that challenge. And don't forget, none of this is allowed, because that is mutiny. So don't even think about mass tweeting this video at celebrities and big YouTubers and social media influencers to get the funding you need to make each step happen. And especially don't reach out to people like Mr. Beast or Jaden Animations or the Odd Ones Out or MatPat. They're the exact kind of influential people who might actually want to see every problem in the world get solved and be able to at least fundraise the resources that they couldn't provide the personal funds to make it start happening in several areas. Oh, that would have been worrisome. And please, do not reach out to your personal community leaders because if you actually got them interested and they wanted to start putting together plans to make the quality of life in your specific area massively improve, well then, uh-oh, that would have completely ruined my plan for world domination. And please, if you're still in school, definitely do not share this with all of your friends because it's much more likely that you haven't had your hopes and dreams crushed yet or been stuck in a dead-end job forever. You might still actually believe that a better way of life is possible and that is a dangerous hope that needs to be crushed. So yeah, forget I said any of this. Keep it to yourself and don't ruin my world domination, please.